Hello everybody. I'm going to upload a series of videos in which I'm going to teach you how to do Rotary and Odontics in a quick and a simple way. In this video, I'll be discussing the basics which every clinician needs to know. So let's go ahead and watch. Now the first question is, which file to choose? There is a continuous parade of new files in the market, all of them claiming to be superior in one way or the other. Now this can be very confusing to the clinician. The magic mantra is to be able to use the file system correctly following the basic principles of root canal preparation. It can be any one system. It is as simple as that. Now I'll be choosing one file system and I'll explain to you how to use it. The two features which always confuse a beginner are torque and speed. Now what are these? The cutting efficiency of a file is equally balanced between the torque and the speed delivered to the rotary file. Now let us understand each one. Torque, it is the force required to rotate the night eye files. In simpler words, it is the force with which the file will cut the dentine. Now it is important that the saw torque is set as per the manufacturer recommendations, which is normally just below the limit of elasticity for each file. It is important to note that if the level of torque applied is greater than the torque at failure, that means the maximum torque it can tolerate, the instrument will fracture. It means that if the torque is too high, the chances of instrument fracture and breakage are more. Also, if the torque is low, then inefficient cutting is expected, so the torque should be right. Speed, it is the revolutions per minute for a rotating file. Follow the speed as per the recommendations. If the speed is high, the cutting efficiency is higher, but the chances of instrument fracture are more. And if the speed is low, inefficient cutting is expected. The torque and the speed are set on the endomotor before we start our canal preparation with rotary files. And these values are the ones which have been recommended by the manufacturer. Now how to proceed? First step is excess cavity preparation. Next step is patency filing. That means negotiating the canals to be able to reach the apex easily. This helps to establish the patency of the canal. For this, we use 6, 8, 10 number files. Next step is pulp extirpation or removal. We use barbed brooches for this. We insert the brooch inside the canal, rotate it and pull it out. With this, we are able to remove the pulp present inside the canal. Next step is working length determination. It can be done with help of apex locators or by using radiographic method. Step 5 is establishing glide path. Now this means it's likely enlarging the canals with hand files before using rotary files. You can see it in the video. Now, glide path is basically a reproducible path. It is achieved by enlarging the canal between 10 and 15 number file. In this video, we are using 10 number file. We are going to prepare the canal till our file becomes loose in the canal. And we are preparing till the working length. You can see the file has become loose. Now our next step will be canal preparation using rotary files. Now you must know that before starting the preparation, we coat the file with EDTA. What does EDTA do? It acts as a lubricant and a chelating agent in the root canals. Also it helps to remove calcifications and it prevents breakage of these rotary files. It is very important to note that files should be rotating when placed in the canal. You can see in the video, that the file is rotating. Also, the canal should not be dry. It should be filled with saline or sodium hypochlorite. Advance the file slowly in 1 mm increments and whenever resistance is felt, immediately retract the file while it is still rotating. Never force any instrument apically. After removing the file, you irrigate the canal. You can see in the video how we passively irrigate the canal. Once we have irrigated thoroughly, we recapitulate it using 10, 15 or 20 number K file. This breaks the debris and it helps to move in the irrigating solution also. 
just see how we move the file in the canal. After removing this file, we will re-irrigate the canal and then without pressure use our rotary file again. The canal preparation technique that we use using rotary systems is crown down technique. In this technique, first the coronal one third is prepared, which is followed by middle one third and finally the apical one third. Now, why do we use crown down technique? Crown down technique is preferred because there is easier access of the root canal. Now, just observe, it's common sense. If we prepare the coronal portion first, we can easily access into the deeper portion of the root canal. Also, there will be easy flow of the irrigants into the very apex and whatever debris is present, it can very comfortably flow out of the canal. So for all these reasons, we use crown down technique. Let me pick one file system, say ProTip or Gold and describe to you how to use it. Now in this system, there are two types of files, shaping files and finishing files. So if you look at the files, first is the SX, it is the orifice opener. Then we have shaping files S1 and S2, S1, S2. Then finishing files F1, F2, F3, F4 and F5. Normally a root canal preparation gets completed by using F1 or maximum F2 file. The root canal orifice is enlarged using orifice shapers and gates clit and drill. So this is the root canal orifice here. This area is enlarged using your orifice shaper. In this case, it was SX. Then we use the files in the order that first we use shaping files and then finishing. The shaping files, they will prepare the coronal two third of the root canal from here till here. Whereas the finishing files, they will prepare the apical one third. But and along with that, they will also be preparing the coronal two thirds. So basically finishing files, they concentrate on apical one third, but at the same time, they are also continuously enlarging the coronal two third part. So this way we get a very smooth and a tapered funnel. Let us discuss each file individually. The first one is S1. Now we take S1, we mark the working length on it and carry it to the full length to the apex. Now this file is designed in the manner, although we have carried the file right till the apex, but it will enlarge and prepare the coronal one third of the canal. That means the cutting edges on the file are arranged in the manner that although it is carried to the entire length till the apex, but the maximum cutting will take place in the coronal one third area. The next file to use is S2. Now again, working length is marked on the file and it is carried to full length in the till the apex. Now the cutting edges are arranged in this file in a manner that it concentrates it cut the cutting on the middle one third of the root canal. Now at this point you must understand that although both S1 and S2 together are preparing coronal two third, they also progressively enlarge the apical one third. So that means that although they are concentrating on preparing coronal two third of the canal, but at the same time some amount of preparation of the apical one third is also taking place. Now after we have finished shaping the coronal two third of the canal using shapers, we proceed to the apical one third. We prepare that using the finishers. So we use F1, F2 or F3 which are finishing files and they are designed to prepare and enlarge the apical one third of the canal. But remind you, at the same time, they're also progressively expanding and shaping the middle one third. So in this way, we manage to create a smooth, tapering, funnel-shaped root canal. Generally, it is seen that in the finishing files, only F1 is required. But sometimes we need to use F2 or maybe even F3. Now, this decision is based on the canal curvature and the cross-sectional diameter of the root canal.
Now these files are mostly used with the speed of 300 RPM, which is the manufacturer recommended speed. After the canal preparation is completed, the canals are dried with absorbent paper points. Such canal shapes are easy to fill utilizing the matting, matching gatta parcha cone. Now the master cone is chosen of the same size as the last preparation instrument. For example, if our last instrument was F1, we will choose F1 gatta parcha cone. If it was F2, we will choose F2 gatta parcha cone and so on. Now the canal is coated with the adequate sealer and gutta parcha cone is placed in the canal. We take a radiograph. If the canal space is adequately filled, then we seal the canal. If some discrepancy is still present, then we use accessory clones using spreaders and we completely seal the root canal. This way the root canal preparation it is very easy to do and quick to perform. In this video, I gave a brief rundown of all the steps of rotary endodontics. Now, in my next video, I will be giving you a practical demonstration of how to use the rotary files for canal preparation. Thank you.